Thank you for joining us for another worldwide transmission against tyranny as we attempt to awaken our fellow humans to the out of control corruption running rampant across the globe. We're going to be here for the next three hours. We have Representative Marsha Blackburn joining us coming up in about an hour and a half to break down the fact that the TSA is absolutely out of control. And she's introduced legislation to point out they have to stop calling themselves officers when they're not even sworn or trained or deputized. They are a fraud out of their jurisdiction. Of course, it's already illegal. I don't know why we need more bills, but I guess people in government see it as if executive power just does something that violates laws, you pass a new law, even though it's already violating a bunch of laws, and somehow that's going to stop it. It's kind of like the TSA in Texas last year, groping members of the legislature, so they unanimously in the House voted to start arresting them when they violated the law, groping people. They didn't need to pass a new law, but they, they were trying to, and the feds threatened an armed blockade with F-16s of the state, and the state said, oh my gosh, well, we'll just roll over in fear. Just like the blackmailed, compromised Congress uh, basically does the same thing. Coming up, we've got a clip of DNC chair says noncompliance with Obamacare will not be tolerated. Some amazing quotes where they say we're not going to tolerate that any more in America, you have to be responsible and you have to pay a penalty if you choose not to be. You know, all the big banks and mega rich are exempt from the taxes. They've written the regulations that way. Uh, most taxes are paid by people making less than $100,000 a year. I've got uh, different government commission reports on that that we've covered here on air. But they create this illusion that the ultra rich uh, will be punished in, in some type of class warfare envy situation if they are uh, you know, brought to heel by government when they control that government. Some, some amazing statements. The IRS knows, of course, exactly what you're doing. Uh, with this system, the IRS now gets to know about a small business owner's entire payroll, the level of their insurance coverage, and it gets to know the income of not just the primary breadwinner in your house, but your entire family's income in order to assess, collect, and mandate taxes, reports Fox News. And uh, it's all in there. All the new agents to enforce it, everything. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Barclays CEO Diamond quits over rate rigging in countries all over the world, including here in the United States. Well, of course, they get banker bailouts from your, your pocketbook. And then they get it at 0% interest, and then they loan it back to governments, the population, between 7 and 30-something percent. Well, some, some credit cards are above 60 now. It's, it's good business. While having Neocon Talk Radio lecture everyone about how evil welfare is all day when they set up the system. So that is just some of the reports we're going to be going over today. And we're going to open the phones up. Uh, Andy Griffith uh, dies at 86. That's funny. I had my children up, all three of them up here at the office yesterday, and they did some homeschool work, even though it's summer, and then they did some art work. But I let them occasionally, every few weeks, watch some uh, Andy Griffith show. I let them watch a couple episodes of that. And he's dead. That is certainly sad. Really great guy. Now, he's a great actor. I uh, was a great actor in Face in the Crowd. Wow, that's a powerful movie. So sayonara, good trip, my friend. I bet you're in a better place. Andy Griffith, dead at 86. We're all going to be dead one day, so enjoy life while it's here. Enjoy the magic. By the way, speaking of that, a couple weeks ago I had the skull in here, the human skull and the crocodile skull, and I said I'd have it last week for you. It's a big special report. You'll find out what the skull's all about sometime, but it's, it's not ready yet. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison. It is Tuesday, July 3rd, 2012. Later on the broadcast, I'm going to read at least part of the Declaration of Independence that is considered basically terrorism by the banker occupational government that has hijacked this nation. But July 4th is tomorrow, so we will talk some about what that actually stands for. Coming up later in the next hour, Representative Marsha Blackburn 
who is valiantly uh, trying to uh, restrict the criminal activities of the banker occupation force, uh, the TSA. She's going to be joining us. And also Rosa Corey, author uh, of a short little book that details the criminal takeover uh, by the globalist uh, via Agenda 21. She's going to be joining us with some new big developments coming up in the third hour today. And we'll have open phones uh, so people can call in with their horror stories. Or if you love uh, having international um, treaties and bureaucracy written by big banks coming in to destroy private property and don't want to be able to have a garden in your backyard and want home inspectors forcing their way in, uh, you can call in and tell us about that uh, as well. I don't think we'll get too many calls. That's why the system's authoritarian. It's extremely unpopular. Uh, Sheriff Arpaio is set to unleash shocking Obama birth certificate revelations. That's the headline. Breathtaking information. That's a quote. Information will top previous press conference, says lead investigator. That's an Infowars.com article. We got Joseph Farad of World Net Daily joining us Thursday, uh, where they're going to be breaking this to give us uh, some tidbits or uh, many ideas. I already had him scheduled to cover other issues, and we're going to get his take on health care, all of it. But Joe Farah for his maiden visit with us uh, will be on the broadcast. When I was up at Bilderberg in D.C., their offices are over there in Virginia, about a, two miles from where Bilderberg was held, and they invited me over. Very nice folks, very professional, nice uh, operation, great people over there, nice newsroom. So I look forward to uh, ha having Joe Farah here on the broadcast Thursday uh, with some other breaking news. Uh, Chief Justice John Roberts bowed to political pressure and changed his vote on Obamacare. That's now being confirmed. Even CBS News is saying that as if we needed to be told that a week before they were going to announce and suddenly, oh, we're not going to now. And then the pressure came because the power structure, the big banks, they want to force 35 million people to buy insurance. And then the, and the, and then the insurance companies can control the care. They can make you buy it and have the IRS enforce it. And that's up at thenewamerican.com. Okay, continuing with some of the other news that's uh, coming up as well. Sarkozy's home and offices, former French president, have been raided dealing with illegal financing of his 2007 campaign, which is on record was funded by Muammar Gaddafi. And then, of course, they could blackmail Sarkozy to get behind the war to go take out Gaddafi or that information will be released, but still he's being burned. And this is how these criminal systems work. Uh, so Nicolas Sarkozy's home raided by French police. Okay, uh, let me, before I go any further, uh, getting into the news and then your phone calls here. Well, I'm going to cover this as well later. Syria running torture center network, rights group says, rights group funded by the banks. I don't want to say the U.S. and NATO and all that. I mean, that's all banker occupied government. Because it's always saying, you know, you know we're saying, you know, like America's saying, or, or U.S. funded rights groups. No, 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 no. The banker occupied media, the banker captured media is saying, we've got to go into Syria because he might have tortured some people. So the United States needs to be invaded because our criminal government has tortured little children, the Army's own report admits, and killed people. And flown people by the tens of thousands to secret sites, black sites, ghost sites all over the world. I mean, I could mention what's been admitted out of the CIA torture center within Camp X-Ray in Guantanamo, but I can't say it on a family show. Drugging people uh, to freak them out. Doing They say to freak them out when it leaked. No, it's because they, they're Satanist folks. Uh, women, prostitutes, blood. I'm going to leave it at that. You can go look it up. I can't even tell you what the Army's own report. Just type in Army's report on Abu Ghraib torture. You'll get the full report, NBC, you name it. It includes raping children with battery acid. I'm just going to leave it at that. People always hear that and don't believe it. They go look it up and go, oh, my gosh, this is true. Yes, this is true. It's because they like to do it. That's why they want to get torture going, because they want to try to legalize it so that they can do it to you. Okay, that's what this is all about, about hell being manifest. So you got to love the double speak, though. Oh, my gosh, they torture people in China and Syria, but then to give no proof of Syria. 
though that is what they do over there, so it probably is going on. But the point is, is that now we've got to invade because they might have tortured. Maybe they threw babies out of incubators. Of course, that later turned out was PR fraud. It doesn't matter, though. It feels good to get upset and get behind a big war and have the troops blow up giant chemical weapons dumps and then have it rain back down and then everybody gets brain cancer. And then the military doesn't give them treatment. But again, it doesn't matter because it felt good at the time. And being conned feels good. Now, let me get into this little piece of news first because Barclays CEO Diamond quits over rate rigging. And this deals with Barclays uh, Chief Executive Bob Diamond quit on Tuesday under fire from politicians and regulators, people they appointed, the highest profile casualty of the interest rate rigging scandal spanning more than a dozen banks across the world, the big banks, who get your money, a lot of it just pure money they get, but then a lot of it's quote, quote, bailout. And then, you know, they give them trillions and then they loan it out at 10, 20, 30 percent or higher to governments, individuals. And then they have an unfair trade advantage and are able to take over. And then they control the regulators and shut down local banks that are a lot more solvent than they are. That's how this works. And so you've got that happening. Uh, you've got these same groups taking over countries. They're imploding by design. Meanwhile... The very same group that runs our nation comes out on Wolf Blitzer, and they have the DNC chair say noncompliance with Obamacare will not be tolerated. This is an Infowars.com article right now. Despite claiming Obamacare was not a tax, and we have links to Obama saying that in all the articles, and it was a conspiracy theory, and there were no death panels, which they now admit. Democratic National Committee Chairwoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz told CNN's Wolf Blitzer that the Internal Revenue Service would be the easiest enforcer of penalties against those who refuse to comply with the new health care law. And she goes on to say, the states, individuals, it will not be tolerated. You will submit to the board. And she says, don't worry. You don't want to buy health care. That's fine. We'll take thousands of dollars. What is it? $5,000. $100 out of each check and then $500 penalties, and then it goes up from there, upwards of $5,000 a year. They'll just take it out of your account. And then it gets rid of a lot of the charity care that was already there, lets the insurance companies lower the standard of care. And the Supreme Court ruled and said, yes, it's a tax, and the IRS will enforce it. And, I, and what have I told you over and over again? Two groups are going to enforce all of this unconstitutional activity. The looting. The TSA... Now on highways and checkpoints and schools and proms, don't believe me, look it up, and, and bus stations for now three, four years. But now they're, now they're rolling out nationwide, everywhere. And they command the army and police. You're like, well, why do not trained, not bonded weirdos command and, and have weird inspector outfits that they wear when they're out? Because it's about scum and criminals that don't even get background checks. Or, or when you do have the background check, if you're a criminal, you go to the front of the line. That's been confirmed. Think about it. We're just calmly talking about the government hiring criminals now. And, and we're so broke back, psychologically, spiritually, we're just like, yeah, that's the way it is. They hire criminals. And then they go out and shake you down on the highways and byways. And, and the new green police the feds are setting up under the rural council and all of this, they admit, same thing in Australia, very same group. It, it's globally standardized that... It's like a two-week course or 10-day course now with the TSA, but in Australia, it's a two-week. And then they just come to your house and say, we're coming in. And they're armed. No judge, no jury. They just, they're coming in to do an inspection. They're coming in to forcibly inoculate. They're coming in to, to cut down your garden in your backyard in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know, that you've had for 20 years, and, and then charge you for it. No law, they just do it. They're here. They rule. Let me tell you, man, driving home now at night, cops run up on you for just for fun. There's a whole lane right next to you just to, I guess, scare you. Cop pulled me over, uh, said, what are you doing crossing my medium? Sure, he could have given me a ticket. He didn't. But I, it was the screaming at me saying, what are you doing crossing my medium? Because, you know, it's, it's out on the road, big dirt spot people go across. It's all totally backed up. Whatever. The point is cops do it all day. And I understand everybody does it. It can turn into a problem. Whatever. Write me a ticket. But it's the attitude of... What are you doing on my road? I, I get it.